Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where we are primarily focused on getting one of my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination. This is Envy Silence's Jupiter Wet Workshop mission, which we spent the last video on. And it's, it's a complicated thing because we have converted the oxygen tank of SLS into a habitat and are using the hydrogen tank to fuel a nuclear thermal rocket engine. And we are just trying to get that habitat in order. And I just didn't foresee some of the issues that we would have here. We're just going to have Envy Science sit in that particular berth there. One of the problems is this Columbus Lab, which is a supply vessel. It has a bunch of supplies on its tail, that so we can't really remove it. And we can't easily move those supplies into the habitat because they're too big. Uh, Envy Science can't carry them in. So what we're going to need to do, because right now it's blocking MV Silence's way out, basically preventing MV Silence from EVAing, uh, we need to move it somehow. So I uh, concoct this vessel that will have extra RCS tanks. We needed some more of those. We don't have enough RCS on the Jupiter Wet Workshop. But also I have a T-junction there. When I made the little tubes, adapter tubes, I had a straight section, a T-junction, and an L-section. And I wanted a T because then we can attach two things. We could have the supply vessel attached and also still allow our Kerbal to get out. And well, anyway, we're launching it with the new Glenn here, which um, has done a good job of doing a quick intercept with fairly light payloads. I mean, it's not a very heavy payload. Uh, and here I'm actually shutting down engines on the first stage so that we can delay the first stage until we can intercept the target orbit. We're launching out of Tanagashima again and so we just want to get down to the target orbit and here I am lighting the engines again. This is all a little bit laggy because there's still the old computer and hopefully now all this will be much smoother. Out goes the first stage and we can now correct the relative inclination a little bit better because we did that delay. So I do. You can see this is uh, burned somewhat in the middle of the prograde vector and the inclination vector. And yeah, we resolve the relative inclination and get an opportunity to rendezvous. Though not immediately. We did a direct rendezvous in the previous video. We have not gotten one since. We, are, we were lucky on that one, I guess. Well, there was some calculation. But anyway, we do expedite somewhat. And that's the end of that delta V there. And we deorbit the stage, of course, making sure to do that. No problems. And here, this is making the final rendezvous burn with its tiny little engine. Again, most of the Delta V is supposed to be carried to the vessel because we want it as RCS fuel, so we don't want to use most of that. All right, so it parks alongside, and we need to get stuff off and rearrange things. So we have six tugs on there. There's one of them floating away. We also have a bunch of radial attachment points. We don't need all of it. Some of it is sort of for a plan B. Basically, I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to attach the T-junction to this. But first, we need to move off the supply vessel. And so we've got the tugs grabbing it and moving it off. And that's going to be one other thing to manage. We've got all these things floating in close proximity with each other. And speaking of things floating in close proximity, Envy Silence himself is going to have to do some of the work here. Heading on out through the tunnel now, which is finally unblocked. And bumping his head quite a few times. And we need to get over to that, where I'm going to pick up the radial attachment point, or Envy Silence is going to pick up the radial attachment point. And the first thing we're doing with that is to sort out some of the things that we need to get placed properly, including the EVA propellant tank. That's going to be important going forward. You can see that Envy Silence's EVA propellant was very low there. Envy Silence needs to sit down in order to replenish that EVA propellant. Uh, so. I, one thing I didn't include was him getting back into the berth and sitting down in there in order to replenish. Because the thing about the pass-through system, which is the way I have the Kerbals floating around inside the interior of the ship, is that you don't automatically get the EVA propellant replenished when you're inside, unlike with regular vessels when they're in the IVA. So yeah, the problem is that the T-junction, unfortunately, MV Sans can't carry it. Now we could use the tugs to move it, but that's a little bit less convenient. This had to be 
moved closer in, it was floating away. This is going to be another problem. Instead of having Emi Sans always go to that berth, which is a few floors down, I had him place the chair there, and that will allow him to sit a little bit closer to the top of the vessel where he's going to be headed out. So easier to replenish EV propellant like that. With the T-junction problem, I was thinking of a plan B here. I released one of the tugs, so that's decoupled, and Emisans, the Kerbal, is floating there. At nighttime, the little T-junction doesn't seem to have the right textures. I don't quite understand why that is. Anyway, uh, Emisans grabbed the bag of flour that he had had that he put down in order to grab the radial attachment point previously. It is all very logistically complicated and bonked his head there. Anyway, yeah, so uh, more placing of things inside in general. And one of the problems with placing things inside, you saw that it attached to its midsection, that flower bag. Uh, that was a mistake. It's supposed to have a note at the bottom to attach with, but that didn't turn out to be the case. So that's not the default sort of attachment point for it. I will have to fix that to make it easier to place it. Anyway, here that wayward tug that we had released uh, comes and grabs that point on the supply section. And again, there's critical supplies here. We're not going to Jupiter without them. So that will allow it to potentially dock to something else. And we'll see that later on. I decided to blow up some of these tugs because I'm on plan B and I don't think they're going to be useful. What I really want is that docking port, and that will allow things to dock to the straight section. And what I'm going to do is put one docking port on one side and another docking port on another side, and have both the supply vessel and this little vessel here, which will provide extra RCS, just dock them to the L sec uh, to the straight tube section. So we've placed that docking port there. We explode more of these tugs. So I had six tugs, but it turns out all I really needed was a bunch of docking ports. And Envy Sans floats over to the wet workshop and places the docking port as far in front on that straight section as possible. And that's because I was worried about clearance and justifiably so. There's not a whole lot of clearance there. We're lucky we were able to dock them at all. So this RCS section is going to counterbalance the supplies on the other side, the food, water, and oxygen, and the pseudo-Columbus lab. Uh, this is actually fairly heavy because the propellant is very dense. It's not going to be an exact balance, but it's going to be good enough because the engines are all in the back and this is all pretty far forward, so it's easy for the engines to compensate for differences all the way up here. Okay, well that one was the easy one to place as it turns out. Uh, next up we have Envy Sans coming back in here. And blowing up more tugs <laughs> for the next docking port that we need to move over to the other side so that the supply vessel can dock to it. And it's sort of a mess really. Can't quite get it exactly opposite here, but we get close enough. All right. So again, that will allow MV Science to go through and EVA in and out. Now, trying to dock the supply vessel to it turned out to be really, really hard. You can see I'm pretty well lined up if you take a look at the nav ball, but it just doesn't work out that time. And again, the next one, this, this was like a very extended ordeal here coming in at just 0.1 meter per second and again nav ball wise it's not too bad but it's just a little bit off because these are tiny docking ports and they're fairly large objects so I do it very gingerly this time very 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 slowly indeed and this time it worked so yep finally but that was quite quite a ordeal I got rid of these tugs. We don't need any extra mass going forward, so I just try and get Envy Sans to blow up as much as he can. Bring in the oven and the meat package and the cheese wheel. Yep, we have all the things and it is time to get the oven baking pizza <laughs> because this is essential. Darn it, it's essential. 
So in goes Emmy Sans to dramatic music. It is a nice thing. I wish I could make the whole pass through system work out a little bit, a lot better, a lot better. It's not a bad idea. So here we are placing stuff. The actual pizza model I have doesn't fit in the oven at all. It's a one meter diameter pizza, which is big, obviously. Uh, but anything smaller would not contain that much food. It's basically a food container, the pizza model. So I wanted a fairly large food container, otherwise we'd have a lot of them. Anyway, the oven is producing pizza out of the cheese, the meat, the flour, and water. Uh, no tomatoes right now, we'll work on that, but it's already fairly complicated as it is. As it turns out, having the ingredients is lighter than having the finished food because we don't have the finished food packaging and everything is fairly densely packed. So there is a benefit to having these ingredients and turning them into food rather than just having prepackaged food. Okay, so we get rid of more mass. We even get rid of the KIS container we don't need anymore. That was in the supply vessel, the pseudo Columbus module. Of course, Columbus module, Columbus lab is not supposed to be a supply vessel, but oh well. Anyway, I decided that that was the one that I wanted, so there. So we finally, finally get to plot for Jupiter. And we have our transfer. It takes a lot, actually. I was not expecting it to take that much. That's a uh, high delta V cost for Jupiter transfer. But we do it and we, we can't really do it super accurately because this is still a painfully long stage. It's only got a single nuclear engine on the tail and supplemented by ion engines, which is wonderful, right? But you can see it's like a 40 minute burn and we have to do it in multiple chunks, obviously. But we have to do the final chunk at one time because once we get on escape, once we've burned about 3,000 meters per second, we're out. So we can't just go around again and do the next chunk of the burn. But we do uh, as many rounds as I thought necessary so that we're not too far radial from the intended vector. Uh, but ultimately, that's all done with. It wasn't the most accurate thing and therefore we used more delta V than we should have and we're gonna need to use more of the ion engine fuel. But we have a bit of that, we've got 12,000 meters per second there. And so ultimately we get our Jupiter encounter and we're head for Europa and uh, not Europa landing. We are just getting into Europa orbit eventually and that's gonna take a while too. All right, so there, there's an encounter, and that'll take a mid-course adjustment because we had an inclination problem, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. It's just a 220 meter per second correction. So, all right, MV Silence finally on his way over. I checked the life support of everything else to see what might need stuff. But everything looked good for the time being, so I did the minor maneuver with the Uranus probe, which I won't bother to show, it was like one meter per second. And then we had a Saturn window, so I decided to launch some Saturn supplies, and we have an ion engine pack there. That's the equivalent of 10 ion engines, by the way, that block. As usual, we are powering it with a nuclear reactor, because out at Saturn we're not going to get enough solar power. And we have some Ge Gemini light lander engines on it as well as supplementary propulsion. And I put it all on the big hydrogen stage from the Kasei rocket with a nuclear engine and then put it all on the Vulcan rocket. So it is quite an assemblage, but you know, if you're gonna send supplies out to Saturn, you need something serious and this looks serious. So up we go. Uh, it's way taller than that launch tower system that came with the Q Zenergia mod. And off it goes. Again, something that will perform much better now. Though actually one reason it's so slow right now is because this is close to the end of the stream. And with KSB running for a while, it tends to page out a lot of stuff to the page file and that makes everything laggy. And we're actually getting close to a point where it's just going to crash. The game actually crashes, so yeah, that, that happens eventually after about three hours actually on this install. It's practically like clockwork really. Anyway, the things we do for Kerbal. So 
That is now in orbit. Well, uh, that's short of orbit. We do deorbit the uh, core stage and we had to keep short of orbit to do that. And then the nuclear engine finishes orbit here. And you can see that it's probably going to need some delta V out of the ion engine stage in order to finish the transfer over to Saturn. And that was to be expected here, the long spool up of the nuclear engine. And we have a plot for Saturn. It only costs a little bit more than the Jupiter thing. I, I think we just had a really bad opportunity for Jupiter. Anyway, so this is the transfer. You might have seen during the start of the transfer burn with the Jupiter wet workshop, it wobbled a whole lot. I had to auto strut it to make sure it was all safe. And then it was wobbling mainly in physical time warp. But this one obviously did not have that problem. And we are now on the ion engine with the remaining 1760 meters per second or so. But we have a problem. You see, time warping during the ion engine burn requires SAS. It only works with the KSB Interstellar module if you have SAS on. And for some reason, we didn't have an SAS module on here. I thought that reaction wheel there was actually the control, the usual control unit that I had. Well, I use either the Delta or Centaur core, and I thought it was a Centaur core, which would have had SAS. So I mistook that. I was reusing that supply vessel from a previous craft file. But anyway, that's derelict. But I got to end the stream on a high note, if you will, as we finally have a plot back for Pekka and company's return from Mars. Uh, they passed by Earth once and we failed to capture them around Earth orbit. But this time we have a nice pass. So they, they had enough supplies at least. And we just did a minor correction with the ion engines uh, here, continuing a uh, secondary correction that we had to do to change the inclination. And we have a good periapsis there in a good enough amount of time. And capturing will only take about 500 meters per second or so. So we're all good. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.